Alrighty, welcome to part one of this Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, make yourself a rolling ball uh, with and without simulated physics. So first thing you want to do is go to third person and then blueprints. Uh, here you'll find your third person character blueprint. This is where all the magic happens uh, with your character. Uh, here is the default Unreal Engine 5 Quinn um, character, uh, which we'll be changing out here shortly. And here in event graph, you'll actually see all of uh, the nodes that control your character. Everything from uh, controller mapping, camera input, movement, and jump input. Uh, we will only be altering movement input, uh, mostly uh, with some jump input, but mostly movement input. Uh, they already have a great template here. Uh, we are just going to be adding some things. Uh, to get ourselves moving. So before you get started, uh, before we get started, uh, we'll want to make sure that uh, everything works. So go back to the third person map, hit Alt P, and you'll be able to uh, begin play. Uh, mostly just make sure that your character works and you can move around. We don't want to be uh, playing around with something and your character doesn't work. Um, so with that uh, confirmed working, we can go back to our third person character here. And the first thing we want to do is change out our character. Um, in order to do this, what we're going to do is take this mesh that we have here and we are going to clear it out so that we have uh, are no longer using the Quinn and instead we are going to add a sphere. Um, now the sphere will be a little too big. Um, so what we're going to want to do is reduce its size um, by 50%. Uh, um, in all axes here um, and this will look good. Now what we'll want to do is change the material so that we can visually see the rolling aspect a little bit better. Um, I'm going to choose uh, something a little more playful here uh, and that's the level grid. It'll be cool because your ball will be see-through and you'll be able to see the lines rolling around. Alrighty, so to change your collision sphere, you'll want to come over here. You can't just resize it like you can the ball. You want to go to the uh, height and radius itself and a good value for this based off of our uh, uh, having of the ball of the sphere would be 25 in both directions. That way you can see that the sphere matches the, um, the other sphere. So uh, if we hit compile and save, we can go ahead and actually play the game. And as you'll see, our, ca our camera wasn't great, uh, but if you look left and right, it rolls properly. But when you press forward, you're just a sliding ball. So to fix our camera, we're going to want to select the camera boom arm uh, because you this attaches to your player um, and also takes care of camera clipping so you don't clip through objects and if you just move the camera itself and not the camera boom uh, camera boom arm you're actually going to lose that clipping effect so what you'll want to do is just go to camera boom here and we're going to offset it uh, in the Z axis let's just do 100 this will bring up the camera and then we're going to want to tilt the camera. This you can change the camera itself. So we just tilt this down 10 degrees. Hit compile, save, and when we hit play, we have a nice camera angle. Um, so with that all taken care of, we have a ball that we can follow. We need to make the ball roll. Alrighty, so to get our player to move, we know uh, that we want to alter the movement input and we want to do this by at the end of uh, adding our movement input to the character we want to add a new command called add local rotation and we're going to want to add that to the sphere so if you control click and you can drag the sphere in we're going to want to add that to the sphere but we're only going to want to add it in one direction. So to do that, we want to split this structure here. And we're going to want to input it into roll. You guessed it right. So rotation in the x direction. Now, we want to have this change based on our, based on our player's speed. We don't want it to just be a 
set value that we tweak and say, hey, looks good. If you want to, you're never going to change your character. You can set this to, I believe, negative 10 and you'll be fine. But what I'm going to do is show you how to do two things. One, how this be uh, variable based off of the player speed and to add a speed component to where you can change your character speed so what I'm gonna do over here is create custom event add custom event we're gonna name this speed and what we want to do out of this is to set the max walking speed um, and our target would be uh, our character movement I believe at the bottom get character movement and so you can slide this back um, we want there to be an input on this custom event so go ahead and slide that over uh, let's rename this to just be speed and so that allows you to set the speed but we want to uh, have a variable we can also track as well so we're going to create a new variable called rotation <clears throat> speed uh, we're going to compile so that we can set this to a default default value of negative 10 in case you don't change the character speed and what you're going to want to do is um, we're going to add a multiply factor so typically I've found um, a good multiply factor to be uh, negative 0.02 um, and then that will in turn set our rotation speed. Let's go to the bottom here and you can plug that in. So when we change our speed, it'll also change our rotation speed. And of course we can now drag in rotation speed and plug that into roll. So if we hit compile and save, you can see that when I hit all P and play, we have a ball that rolls, but this is kind of slow, so let's use our new speed uh, custom event. So if you open the level blueprint, uh, when you open a level, what you can do is <clears throat> uh, event begin play. So when we begin playing the game, we will set our character speed. So first thing we want to do is get our uh, player character class so to do that you want to do cast uh, to vp underscore third person character um, you want to attach an object to this which will be uh, get player character so attach that there and then now we can use the function that we created in there called speed so let's see here set speed uh, no, I think it's just speed so we would call the function speed and let's set it to a value of 1000 and sure enough now when we start the game we will now have a faster ball and it rolls a little faster as well so as you can see this is pretty good and if you go left or if we go right it accounts for that and we can still jump just fine so if this is all you wanted to do uh, you can end the tutorial here and go to part two where I'll show you how to add a uh, sound component to this uh, when you roll and jump. Um, but if you want to learn how to uh, control this with physics based so that you slowly roll to a stop or if you're not if you're on a slanted hill and you're not moving you will slowly roll down. If you want it fully physics based um, I will go into that next. Alrighty, so now if you want to simulate this with physics, uh, the first thing we're going to want to do is get rid of this local rotation. Won't be needing it. Uh, same, uh, and with the speed, we will keep it, but we only need it to actually set the rotation speed. Um, First things first, we're going to learn how to spell rotation. So let's not have that extra I. Um, and then from there, uh, we're going to change the default value to actually be 20 instead of negative 10. Um, next, uh, what we're going to want to do is go back to the third person map and 
we have speed here again let's set this to 20 um, compile and save it now we can go back to the map so in order for you to simulate physics you can select your capsule component here and go ahead and hit down here simulate physics um, so if you compile and save this and hit play you'll notice that your ball bounces first of all and two your ball doesn't move it doesn't jump it doesn't roll it doesn't do anything because we need to change how we actually what we do with our uh, movement inputs so what you're going to want to do instead of a movement input is an actual add uh, impulse uh, add angular impulse in degrees that is the one um, so you can disconnect this um, and you'll have add impulse in degrees so what we need is a target which will be our uh, capsule component so if you just control click drag that in uh, you'll have your capsule component as what you're controlling uh, but now we need our impulse um, and you're gonna there's gonna be one for left and right and one for <coughs> forwards and backwards um, now you could flip-flop these and so you don't have to change the inputs but the best way to do it I found is just leave everything where it is you're gonna end up using the control rotation vectors here um, and so what we're gonna want to do is take the X here swap it with uh, or sorry, take the Y, swap it with the X, and then you're gonna want to take the X here and multiply that by negative one. Uh, I've already done this for you, so I've already gone through the pain of figuring this all out. So uh, that will hook this up. So now what we're gonna wanna do is to get this, so first thing we're gonna wanna do is we want our rotation speed as the input, uh, the initial input, and then we're going to want to get a multiply node here and the other input will actually be this uh, action Y in the case here and then you're going to take the vector it also returns here from the control rotations and you're going to want another multiply node here and you can just input the first integer multiplication and then in, put this new vector into the impulse here um, now that you have this one all you need to do is hit select all that and hit control D to duplicate all of this slide it over and what you want to do is connect these two and in this case you're going to want to connect this uh, float node here uh, for the first multiplication and for the second multiplication you want to take this rotation vector and add that and there you go um, then lastly you want to make sure to check velocity change otherwise again your ball won't move um, so everything looks good here we can go ahead and compile and save and sure enough hopefully if the magic works we should be able to now roll and you'll be a little bit harder to slow down and if you take your fingers off it'll just keep rolling um, and sure enough it rolls quite nicely now the only issue is you can't jump so um, how do we do that oh and real quick um, if your character is not rolling properly or it's super wobbly or that kind of thing what you want to do is go to your viewport and make sure a few things you want to make sure that your camera boom um, the location is set to zero across these if there's any sort of variation here you're gonna wobble a bit um, and same thing with the sphere make sure that's zeroed out and the capsule component uh, or the third person character all these uh, that location is good but if your camera boom is not zeroed out you will wobble and you'll be wondering why yours doesn't look like mine so uh, with that out of the way we can now add jump um, so we have this initial jump input but it doesn't work uh, all we want to do is have a space bar to jump alrighty so uh, in order to set up uh, a manual uh, jump input we want to go to edit project settings scroll down to input then in the action mapping we want to add a new one 
we're going to call this, uh, you might want to make this, but you want to call this jump. After you call it jump, you want to add a few keys. Uh, I'll add spacebar. Uh, wait, sorry. If you click this button, you can do spacebar. And then you're going to also want to add another one in case you want controller input. And you're going to want to do gamepad. Um, gamepad face right or gamepad face right bottom gamepad face button bottom so this would be X on PS4 controller or A on Xbox um, so that you still have that controller mapping because the actual um, inputs up here the enhanced input action also handles uh, controller as well so you want to make sure that if you can move with controller, you can jump with controller. So with that all set, you don't have to save anything and auto saves, you can just go ahead and close this. Um, and now we want to add a new input, input jump. So jump, this will no longer work. So we have our own um, action, which is jump. We can take, yeah, we'll just leave those for now. So what do we want when we hit jump? So a first, a few variables we want to take care of first. Uh, we want one that's called jump height. Um, and we want another one that'll be a jump tracker. Uh, typically your uh, the previous the enhanced input will already has a jump tracker built in. Uh, it's called can jump and it, it'll track um, if your character is actually able to jump or not. That way you don't just do double jumps or infinite jumps, that kind of thing. Um, we'll set this to be a Boolean value. Uh, this to be a float. If we compile, we want to set this to be true by default. Uh, where we can jump as soon as we start the level. And jump height, we'll set that to be 500. You can play around with this if you want your character to jump higher or lower, that kind of thing. Alrighty, so next we want to grab our capsule component and to uh, make our character jump we're going to do an add impulse uh, and we want to make sure that is the uh, physics based one uh, not the character movement but the physics based one um, and what we're going to do is uh, use our jump height and we're going to from that we're going to make a uh, vector and the input will be the z axis and then we'll just plug that straight into impulse. Again, we want to check velocity change, so we're actually changing the velocity of our character. Um, and then we want this jump tracker. So uh, we want to get a branch to tell if this is true, do it. So it B and then click. And then you can add the condition into here. Um, and if we press jump and we can jump, uh, we will add the impulse and then after we add the impulse we want to set the jump uh, tracker to be false um, and so if we test this out we should be able to jump just once um, and that's it um, no jumps after that perfect and to simulate us uh, being able to jump more than once we need to see if our player has hit the ground so first thing we want to do is set the uh, our capsule component scroll down to simulate generate hit events and we want to check that uh, so that this node works which is event hit um, pretty much saying that if you hit the ground you should be able to copy this and paste this here um, and set jump tracker to true um, and if all is working, that should be everything. So uh, you can roll around, you can jump, you can't double jump, but when you land back on the ground, you can jump around. So that is everything. Now you have a ball that you can roll around, change the jump height, jump, change the speed height. Um, <clears throat> and depending on um, if you want physics based or not, uh, I personally, in my game, I went with uh, non physics based. I felt like it was uh, a little easier for the. Uh, player to be controlled. Um, ball's a little more unpredictable with physics based, but um, up to you depending on how hard you want your game to be. Um, but yep, that's everything for the tutorial. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this and I uh, look forward to part two where you can learn how to uh, uh, make sounds and we can make rolling sounds and uh, hit sounds from when we hit the ground and jump. And that'll be all for this tutorial. See you.